صل على محمد الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله انتجبه لولايته واختصه برسالته واكرمه بنبوته امينا على غيبه ورحمه للعالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعاله وعليهم السلام اوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله واخففكم من عقابه فان الله ينجي من اتقاه بمفازتهم لا يمسهم سوء ولا هم يحزنون ويكرم من خافه يقيهم شر ما خافوا ويلقيهم نظرة وسرورا وارغبكم في كرامه الله الدائمه واخففكم عقابه الذي لا انقطاع له ولا نجاه لمن استوجبه فلا تغرنكم الدنيا ولا تركنوا اليها فانها دار غرور كتب الله عليها وعلى اهلها الفناء فتزودوا منها الذي اكرمكم الله به من التقوى والعمل الصالح فانه لا يصل الى الله من اعمال العباد الا ما خلص منها ولا يتقبل الله الا من المتقين after all due praise to allah almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator our nourisher our provider our sustainer our lord we seek best of his blessings and favors for his most beloved servant and our nabi and our rasul sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and his purified household ahlul bayt alaihim salatu wassalam جماعت المسلمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته once again i remind myself and all of you who are present here for taqwa of allah almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah mubarakay nahl ayat number 125 almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala commands بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ادعوا الى سبيل ربك بالحكمه والموعظه الحسنه وجادلهم بالتي يا احسن ان ربك هو اعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو اعلم بالمهتدين صدق الله العلي العظيم in this verse almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala basically explains to us addressing of course his nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam the major principles of tabligh da'wa and propagation of the path of lord deen how to call people how to make da'wa almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala says ud'u ila sabil rabbika and invite to the path of your lord with wisdom and good advice and 
argue with them, engage with them in a manner that is best. Indeed, your Lord knows best those who astray from his path and he knows best those who are guided. Mahtadeen. In this verse, Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has shown us three important components of da'wa. Number one, that your da'wa, your call, your invitation should be based upon three important elements. Number one, Hikmah, wisdom, means that you call people based upon reasoning, rationality, logical. You must provide rational argument and reasoning for your invite and call you will never be able to successful to call people if it is not based upon reasoning and rational argument. But reasoning and rational argument is not enough. Second quality, wal mawizatil hasana and must be along with good advice, wa'az. Now what is the difference between calling people based upon logic and rationality and calling people with good advice? The difference is that good advice means that you must consider the emotional the psychological conditions of your dialogue. Rational is one issue, being logical and philosophical and intellectually very astute is one aspect. But when you are speaking and when you are presenting your argument, it must be along with emotions. It must be along with softness. In other words, it must be along with good akhlaq, good behavior. The way you present must be a, you know, manifestation of your character. Content of your dawa is one thing. Presentation of your dawa is another thing. Hikmat means contents of your dawa should be philosophically, intellectually, rationally, logically strong. And Mawizatil Hasana means presentation must be very good, very good, must be with character, akhlaq. Wajadil him billati hiya ahsan. Now, the third important point in da'wah and in strategy of da'wah is. That dawa is not one way. It's not that you just deliver your speech and you go. No. It's an engagement involved. There's an interactive phase of dawa. You call and maybe they will respond. And they will argue 
or they will dispute or they will disagree or they will be critical of what you have presented wajadilhum billati yes engage with them argue with them even having dispute with them in other words discussion with them debate with them nothing wrong but this debate must be billati ya ahsan but the manner of debate and manner of your argument and your uh, you know engagement should be the best ya ahsan which is the best hmm. in other words again in issue of engagement your akhlaq is important your akhlaq is important your behavior is important the way you engage the way you argue the way you dispute that is important that's very critical so these three principles quran gives for dawa three strategical principles and from these three strategical principles two of them are directly connected to your akhlaq one is only the issue of contents contents must be right but content will not do anything if your akhlaq is not right if your behavior is not right if your approach is not ethical and respectful approach in light of this verse and the message which we receive in this verse of holy quran i would like to take you to a very small incident related to second imam of ahli al-bayt first grandson of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam imam hasan al-mushtaba alayhi salatu wassalam imam hasan al-mushtaba alayhi salam whose martyrdom we just commemorated day before on 7th of safar Imam Hasan Mushtaba alayhi salatu wassalam known as Karim of Ahl al-Bayt means manifestation of that generosity that honor that gentleman spirit that graceful spirit of the family of prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam you know there's a hadith from rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam it says law kan al aqlu rajulan lakana hasan if intellect and aql was a man a human being if it appears in form of a human being aql intellect it will be hasan salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ha anyway let me now quickly narrate for you that very small incident recorded in the history of imam hasan mushtaba alayhi salatu wassalam with but amazing amazing points are there a person wants to reflect really recorded that imam hasan mushtaba used to live in madina and some man came from syria and you know syria is base of his enemies people who are thirsty of the blood of ahl al-bayt alayhi salatu wassalam at that time a syrian came to visit madina while he was riding on his horse an imam was walking in the street of madina he came across to imam and recognized imam as the grandson of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and without even greeting 
and saying anything is started swearing and using vulgar language and abusive words against him you are this and you are that and you are this and you people and you bad vulgar abusive swearing where in madina madina is a city of prophet madina is a city of ahlul bayt Madina is the place of his own family Imam Hasan Mushtaba's Bani Hashim got to support this is base if someone so openly insults Imam in the open public in a street like that will have a reaction people will come with their swords to sort him out how he got courage to speak like that to Imam but really beautiful is this how imam hasan al mushtaba responded imam hasan al mushtaba first of all the history recorded fatabassama number 1 imam hasan al mushtaba smiled allahu akbar in place of getting face red and angry and losing temper fatabassama imam smiled and after smiling Imam alayhi salatu wassalam says assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and after saying assalamu alaykum he says i thought i think that you are a traveler you are a stranger gharib you not from madina you are from somewhere and i think that possibly you made mistake you are confused but if you want listen listen if you want we can forgive you and if you want to ask from us something we will give you and if you want from us guidance we will guide you and if you want to want us to share with you some burden on you we will happily do that if you are hungry we will feed you if you don't have clothing we will provide you with the covering if you are in need we will suffice if you don't have a place to go to stay we will shelter you if you have any hajat need we will reply to you and it is better that come to us and stay with us as our guest until you are a passenger or a traveler in this city and we have alhamdulillah sufficient accommodation and sufficient resources to host you this is response of imam hasan mujtaba to someone who did not greet him but swerved him this syrian man almost fell from the horse almost fell from the horse and is busted into tears and cried and said allahu akbar i bear witness that allah knows best where to place his message means what allah knows best where to place his nabuwwat and message in which family you are the family where he placed the message i bear witness that you are khalifatullah on the earth i believe witness i bear witness that allah knows best where in what canal in what channel to channel his message to the people
I bear witness that you and your father were the most hated people. Were the most hated people in my eyes. Allahu Akbar. But today, after hearing you, you are the most loved people in my eyes. Allahu Akbar. And he, you know what he did? And then he bring all his stuff to the house of Imam Hassan Mushtaba, Allahu Akbar, and changed from an enemy of Ahlul Bayt to a lover and follower of Ahlul Bayt. Alayhim salatu salam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Unfortunately, time does not allow my brothers. But really, such a simple and you know straightforward story has lot to think and reflect. Who is this man? First of all, very quickly, let me just go through fast. Who is this man? Syrian, Damascus, coming from place where officially cursing on Ali is part of khutbah of Jum'ah. Damascus where when news of the martyrdom and assassination of Ali inside the mosque reached, people were surprised and wondering how it is possible that Ali was killed in the mosque. What Ali has to do with the mosque? Was Ali used to pray, for, for, perform salat? Why? What, what Ali to do with the masjid? Why Ali was killed in the masjid? Damascus is the place you know, Allahu Akbar, where all the fabricated ahadiths were made against Alil Bayt and in praise of Bani Umayyah, Shajarai Malauna. Allahu Akbar. Where people are under heavy propaganda. Hmm. Therefore, Imam alayhi salatu was salam, listen carefully, does not react to him in, on his level, Imam recognizes and realizes that this man is unfortunately under a strong influence of propaganda. You can't just blame him. You can't just point finger to him. You can't just condemn him. You can't just counter him. He he coming in a situation in a background like that. Number two, Imam made salam to him for tabassama and salam. Number three, he said, Ayyuha Sheikh. Imam didn't say, Ayyuha Rajul. Could have been possible for Imam to say, Oh man, oh guy. Imam didn't say, say Ayyuha Sheikh. In Arabic, when you say Ayyuha Sheikh, means, if I want to trans translate it in our Cape Town slang, means, Buta, Ayyuha oh. Sheikh, O Elder, O Buta, O Brother, O Respectful Elder. That's how Imam addressed him. And then what Imam says, I think you are gharib, huh? very, very important. Maybe we do not understand, but that man understood it completely. Therefore, in one minute he changed so much. I think you are gharib. Gharib means what? Gharib means a stranger. Gharib means foreigner. Gharib means alien. Gharib means someone who is lost. Gharib means someone who do not have any family, tribe, brothers, family, clan to support. Imam very delicately place a very finger on a very sensitive nerve, huh? You know you, why you are under such a strong influence of Bani Umayyah? Because you do not have a base. Because you do not have a support. Because you are lost. Because you are completely naive with no, you know, support base. And, a, you know, 
if a person without support base, without family, without, you know, links and connections, very easily can be, you know, taken from one side to other side, can go and change the direction, can be influenced, in other words, very easily. Gharib. Not that you are from Syria and in Medina you are Gharib. No, that is one Gorobat. That is one strangership. And there's one that you are a traveler and a foreigner. But Imam wanted to say to him, it looked like that. That you do not have a base. You do not have a support. You do not have a background. You do not have a, a strong identity with you. Therefore, Bani Umayyah's propaganda could manage to sway you, could manage to come control you and capture you so strongly and then imam says ah tamal ah tamil possible does not say for sure you are misguided imam says possibly you are in error amazing akhlaq amazing humility imam shows his imam was doubtful about his misguidance his imam has a smallest of doubt about that he is lost. He was swearing imam. He was using vulgar and abusive language against Ahlul Bayt. And imam says, I think probably, possibly, you are, you know, in error. You made a mistake. Look at this akhlaq of imam. Then Imam says, with all this abusive attitude and behavior, we are ready to welcome you. If you want, we will forgive you. Again, why Imam is saying, if you want, we will forgive you. You know, it's, it's a very delicate point. Imam does not want to patronize. Uh, Allahu Akbar. Imam doesn't want to show eh, that I'm doing a favor to you. No, no. If you want, if you think, we can forgive you. It's not a problem. If you want, we can provide you. If you want, we can feed you. If you want, we can provide you a place to live and stay. All these delicate words from Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salatu was salam completely, completely, you know, changed this man and created a revolution. Now he is not asking that hadith which he heard in Damascus against Ahlul Bayt, against Ali, against Fatima, against Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain or other Ahlul Bayt members. That hadith is valid, authentic, not authentic. Argument is right, not argument is right. No, 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 no. He is surrendered before this akhlaq and approach of Imam. He said, a man with this akhlaq, with this humility, with this understanding, with this acknowledgement, with this tolerance, Allahu Akbar, tahammul, with this tolerance, with this forbearance, cannot be anyone but the one who Allah has selected to guide the humanity. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs> And, and this akhlaq of Imam Mushtaba was really in his whole life. That's how he, now I don't have time really, because in lifetime and at that particular time of Imam Hassan Mushtaba's life, it, it was a start of downfall of, you know, very fast, very rapid downfall of akhlaqi values, morality, and ethical standards in Islamic society. Imam responded them with them, with the greatest of akhlaq and morality. Someone comes to Imam. Just let me say and conclude, brothers and sisters. He came to Imam, alayhi salatu was salam, you know, looking for help. But to express his problem, he said something beautifully. And I'd like to, just quickly, he read uh, poetry in front of Imam. He say, "Lam yabqali shayun yuba o bedirhamin, yakfi ka mandaru halati an mukhbari." Allah Akbar. He said, "O oh, Imam, I don't have even anything left in my house. I can sell it to buy food." 
and it is sufficient for you to look at my face and it will give you the news of what is my situation illa illa basaya ma wajhin suntuhu allah yuba wa qad wajadtuka mushtari allah accept this dignity you know this what is left with me i have nothing in house which i can sell and buy food for my children what i left i am left with this you know maul wajh in arabic means dignity respect integrity i got nothing i got only this this is what i left with with my dignity and i can't sell it waqt wajadtu ka mushtari but i found you are a buyer of my allahu akbar dignity my honor allahu akbar imam ordered whatever is in the house give it to them history says 12000 dirham were there imam gave it to him ha huh. nothing left even for imam himself and family anything and imam in response to his poetry said this poetry ajal tana fa anna ka wailu badana ajal tana you rushed us allahu akbar walau al walau amhal tana lam tum tari if you would have given us some chance we could have done much more but you have did not give us chance ajal tana fa anna ka wailu badana فخذ القليل فخذ القليل وخذ القليل وكن كانك لم تب ما صنته وكاننا لم نشتري الله اكبر الله فخذ القليل so take this small amount and be like that you have not sold anything even that dignity of an honor of you وكاننا لم نشتري and like we have not even bought anything allahu akbar this is akhlaq of kareem of ahl al bayt imam mujtaba alayhi salatu wassalam awsikum ibad allah wa nafsi bi taqwa allah wa asmun allah wa iyyakum bi taqwa wa jala al akhirat khairan lana wa lakum fa inna khair al hadith wa ablagh muizat al muttaqin kitab allah al aziz al hakim bismillah ar rahman ar rahim wal asr ان الانسان لا في خسر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون وجعله رحمه للعالمين بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا لله باذنه وسراجا منيرا من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فقد غوى اوصيكم عباد الله بتقوى الله الذي ينفع بتعاته من عطا والذي يضر بمعصيته من عصى الذي اليه معادكم واليه حسابكم فان التقوى وصيه الله فيكم وفي الذين من قبلكم قال الله عز وجل ولقد وصينا الذين اوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم واياكم ان تتقوا الله وان تكفروا فان لله ما في السماوات وما في الارض وكان الله غنيا حميدا ان تفعوا بموعظه الله والزموا كتابه فانه ابلغ الموعظا وخير الامور في المعاد عاقبه ولقد اتخذ الله الهجه فلا يهلك من هلك الا عن بينه ولا يحيى من هيا الا عن بينه وقد بلغ رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله الذي ارسل به فلزم وصيته وما ترك فيكم من بعده من الثقلين كتاب الله واهل بيته الذين لا يدل من تمسك بهما ولا يهتدي من تركهما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على محمد عبدك ورسولك سيد المرسلين وامام المتقين ورسول رب العالمين اللهم صل على علي امير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وحجتك على خلقك وايتك الكبرى والنبع العظيم وصل على الصديقه الطاهره فاطمه سيده النساء العالمين وصل على سبته الرحمه وامامه الهدى 
الحسن والحسین سید شباب اہل الجن و صلی علی آئمۃ المسلمین و حدات المؤمنین و حمات المستدافین علی ابن الحسین زین العابدین و محمد ابن علی باقر العلوم و جعفر ابن محمد الصادق و موس ابن جعفر القاظم و علی ابن موس الرضا و محمد ابن علی الجواد و علی ابن محمد الحادی و الحسن ابن علی العسکری و الخلف الحادی المہدی اللہ <تصفيق> والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما حملتنا من الحق فعرفنا وما قصرنا أنه فعلمنا أوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله Once again I remind myself and all of you who are present here for taqwa of Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala Quickly uh, time is very short for me to mention number one of course was really this week we saw uh, success of Islamic resistance in Lebanon on a very different level. Lebanon which is going through such a terrible crisis. People don't have food. Schools, orphanages, hospitals. No, I don't want to repeat. Basic issue of fuel is such a challenging issue that even bakeries can't bake bread for the people. Crisis going on for the last six months, crazy. Now, you know very well, and I don't need to narrate. And in this situation, Hezbollah and its leadership, who always are on the front line of fighting against Zionists and occupation and on the war front, comes to rescue the people on this front. And when they want to rescue by getting oil and diesel from their support base, Islamic Republic of Iran. Such a chaos, such a opposition. People are angry. People are suffering. They say, no, you can't take. Okay, if these fuel ships will come, we will bomb them. We will not let them to come on the you know, port of Syria. And then when they will be you know, transported to Lebanon, we will attack them, we will not allow. And inside Lebanon, even their supporters and proxies saying that if we get this few liters of oil, so what? But Americans will sanction against us, and I don't know what. But with all that, Alhamdulillah, I mean, we saw this week, oil tankers arrived on Syrian ports, and from there, they were transported fully, completely to Lebanon, and from Lebanon also Hezbollah and really this Islamic resistance and its capable really leadership. How I per person can say about this Sayyid, I don't know that in a battlefield he is a lion and in his own country and in his own city and sent, he is a most organized, well equipped with the skills of, you know, handling the crisis. Allahu Akbar. All the conspiracies, all the plans, all failed and another victory and another success recorded for this purified people and their sincere movement. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Quickly also I would like to remind also that this weekend is a voter registration weekend. Please take interest in the matters of your country, your society, and especially local elections. I was intending to speak, but now time is not enough, maybe before election itself, when we can really speak. But I would like to encourage, you know, our brothers and sisters to make sure that they are registered. Also, uh, once again, reminder that Alhamdulillah, we have somehow came out of the situation of the third wave of 
corona and COVID-19 uh, and of, of course paying a very, very hefty price, losing so many people, Allahu Akbar, in this wave. But Alhamdulillah, end of the day, some relief is there. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى But again, my humble request is for vaccination, for taking care of yourself, taking care of those who are around you, and be really considerate and thinking about those soldiers, I will say, who are fighting in the forefront against this enemy of COVID-19. They also got wife, they also got children, they also got family. They put all their life in danger, at risk to serve us. Exactly like a soldier who is sitting on the forefront line and welcomes bullets coming to his chest. These people, doctors, nurses, hospital staff, they, they are in ICUs, in high care, in COVID wards, basically like standing in front of these bullets coming in on their face. Don't they have family? Don't they have wife? Don't they have children? Don't they have husband? Don't they have, you know, but they take all that risk for us. Can't we even consider it to do whatever we can do in our small capacity to shed a little bit of their burden and load from their shoulders. أوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله وأسمن الله إياكم بتقوى الآخرة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر